cool uh, so it's time guys we will start i'm hoping everybody will join quickly so that we can quickly start the quiz without delaying but firstly i just wanted to say that uh, good evening everyone right uh, welcome back to your own channel scholars and today as the thumbnail says we're going to have a quiz on chapter 7 which is changing changing cultural traditions right we have finished that chapter in like three classes now uh, we have a quiz coming up in the session um it's fairly simple all of those are direct questions which i have prepared so nothing to worry it's going to be fairly easy so yeah that being said uh, a couple of you are already here i'm hoping others also will join in the next 2 3 minutes because by 6 5 basically we'll start right so if you know any of your friends who wants to give the quiz uh, just call them up and uh, ask them to quickly join okay um yeah i'll just do quickly the introductory part uh, my name is nikita as most of you all know and uh, i'm the history educator here at an academy scholars channel i take classes for both standard 11th and 12th and a little bit about my educational qualifications i have recently graduated from ashoka university with a major in history and a minor in political science um quickly talking about an academy's plus features you can actually learn live uh, just by sitting at the comfort of your own houses unlimited access to so many courses and these are taught by top educators of india there are regular doubt clearing sessions answer writing sessions uh, practice tests as well as live test series exhaustive coverage of syllabus will be done mentorship will be provided guidance will be provided along with access to study materials which are usually in the form of pdf uh about the pricing the prices you see on the left side of the screen are the actual prices these uh six different ranges if you use the code which is tum10 you will be basically given a 10% off and these are the post discounted prices in the same manner we also have iconic features uh where we have personal mentorship live doubt solving sessions weekly reports parent connect and also study planners So even here um, we have nine different ranges of subscriptions starting from 3 months to almost 48 months so all of these are the actual prices but after using the code these are the post discounted prices so have a look at them and feel free to go ahead with whichever one you feel comfortable and next is something called as an academy's combat scholarship test as the name suggests it's a scholarship test and it's available both in hindi and english the format is as such that you will be given 30 questions and 60 minutes to answer them so it's highly beneficial so join it and take part every sunday at 1 pm uh okay cool so that's a little pitch we had for today aditya is here with us hi aditya good evening uh sunil hi hi sunil good evening yes we are going to have a menti like right now within 2 minutes so just call up all your friends who wants to join because we'll start within a minute or two so um hurry up guys okay um just give me one minute i'll set this up for you oh yeah we are here um cool so guys as you can see on the screen uh, if you all know how, what the menti procedure is uh, quickly join if for people who don't know how to join menti let me just say that just open your google browser uh, chrome browser or something and uh, type in www.menti.com right so after doing that it will ask you for a code you can enter this code which is 12094779 it's right on the top here i 
I'm repeating the code once again. It's one two zero nine four double seven nine. Join quickly, guys, so that we can start quickly. Try and join Menti itself because if there are more people on Menti, then uh, we can have fun instead of answering in the YouTube chat box. So I highly request you all to join the Menti. If anybody doesn't know, I'm repeating the process again. Just go to your Chrome browser, um, type www.menti.com and it will ask you for a code after that. Just type this out which is 12094779 and yeah, after that you can basically start doing the quiz. In case there are some technical problems and you're not able to join, then give your answers in the YouTube chat box itself. I'll have a look at them. Yeah. Okay. Should I start? Guys, try to join Menti. Uh, those of y'all who are on the YouTube chat, uh, try to join Menti, guys. Cool, uh, we can start Aditya. Okay, uh, we have 28 questions. All of them are fairly simple. Uh, nothing difficult, nothing tricky. Because this chapter is very straightforward, right? There are no concepts involved as such. So, fairly easy questions and all the best. Yeah? Okay, uh, we'll have a quick look at question number one. It's up on the screen. It says... Ibn Rushd was a Arab philosopher belonging to which country? Like his origins are from Arab region, but he settled in a different country. So which country did he belong to? Was it France, Germany, Spain or Britain? Ibn Rushd was an Arab philosopher of which country? Okay, uh, fair enough. The half of you all got this right, which is option C, Spain, right? It's explicitly given in your textbook that even though his origins are from Arabia, like he is, uh, is Muslim by birth, but for better opportunities, he went and settled in Spain, right? Okay, um, we'll have a quick look at the leaderboard. Okay, Tom is the fastest and also um, leading this leaderboard. Guys, I'll, I highly appreciate if you all put up your own names because then I'll at least know who's answering, right? So, but yeah. Okay, let's look at question two. The painting Mona Lisa was made by which artist? Very easy question. Was it Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, Donatello? Yeah, this was an easy answer. Um, it's option B, Leonardo da Vinci. Very, very famous. We have been learning this right from our childhood, right? Okay. Cool, four of y'all got this right. Again, okay. guys, it'll be very, very helpful if you people like at least tell me your names in the chat box because I'll know who's answering, right? So, anyways, an account by name Mars was the fastest, but Tom is still topping. Good job, Tom. Question three. The author of the book, The Prince, is Dash. Like, who authored the book titled The Prince? 
वॉज इट लॉरेंजो वाला गुटेनबर्ग मैकेवेली और एल्बर्टी हु ऑथर्ड द बुक टाइटल्ड द प्रिंस यू हैव टेन मोर सेकेंड्स लॉरेंजो वाला गुटेनबर्ग मैकेवेली एंड एल्बर्टी ओके फेर न the answers actually mark you very guys all of these facts are there in your textbook right so i highly like recommend you all to go and revise all of this stuff because these facts are really really important in when it comes to your examination right for your like term 2 i'm talking about so just remember all of these facts the authors of the books um like what is the profession of these people and stuff like that yeah Okay um uh thanks Manthan for uh changing your name I highly appreciate it and also good job done on answering it very quickly um yeah question 4 Ptolemy's Almagest right ptolemy is the author almagest is his work so what is his work based on was it based on mathematics astronomy philosophy or astrology ptolemy's almagest was a work on dash okay that was a quick answer uh, yes all of you are right it's absolutely correct it's option b it was astronomy he's basically an astronomer right so ptolemy is actually a non um, arabic speaking um, author but the mere fact that his his name of the book says al majest again al is something a prefix used to denote for arab texts right if you look at any arab name any arab term you'll always come across this uh, al in between right so even though al majest is not a arab work like it's not an it's not written in arabic he still uses the word al to denote the relationship between arab and uh, greek scholars or greek works right so um, that's the relation we'll have a quick look at the leaderboard Manthan was again again the fastest and also topping good job all brings out the arabic connection exactly aditya you have the point there good so question number 5 the earliest universities in the european continent were set up in the country of dash like where were the uh, earliest universities found in europe was it france was it germany was it italy or england france germany italy or england you have 8 more seconds quickly guys the earliest universities in europe were set up where okay that was a simple answer i would say the answer is option c italy good job guys everybody got this right um let's see who is the fastest manthan was the fastest again um also topping good job uh preeti is here with us hi preeti good evening uh if you just want to join menti quickly uh, the code is up on the screen uh do it quickly preeti because we're already done with like four five questions okay uh question 6 the families that gave more importance to women during the 15th century were those of dash like which families were they who gave importance to women again let me just say out the options loud 
aristocrats artists merchants and scholars absolutely correct everybody it's option c merchants right again when i mean importance to women i'm not talking about total freedom that's not the case but at least the condition is much much better when compared to the people of aristocratic families right we we have seen instances where for example the husband of the or the male person is away for some work let's say in a shopkeeper family then at least the women of the family or the wife of the family will sit in the shop and sell stuff and like sell things right she at least has that um authority or freedom to talk to people come out and interact with people in the public right but that was not the case with aristocratic families it was very strictly prohibited for them to come out and talk to people right so that's a little bit different uh, between aristocrats and merchants that doesn't mean the whole situation is better no women are still submissive it's still a patriarchal society like men dominated society but it was better for merchants right yes better than aristocratic families aditya amazing okay um manthan was again the fastest um good job manthan cool let's look at question 7 in arabic the person who was known as aflatoon was dash like which of the following um, people were referred to as aflatoon in arabic okay that was a quick answer i would say exactly right the answer is plato right again we have come across these statements when we were talking about translation works right so initially um, none of the works are translated so people didn't really know what to read and how to read because they don't know those languages but once all of these greek and roman books were being translated into other languages and when plato's book was translated his name was referred to as aflatoon in arabic right so again every author had a different name in arabic unlike the present generation look let's look at 21st century right all of our names are similar in every language i'm called nikita in english i'm called nikita in hindi i'm called nikita in greek Fran- french anywhere but back in those days names used to change uh, from place to place right okay um let's look at the leaderboard Okay, Manthan is again the fastest. Good job, Manthan. Great consistency. Okay, question eight. Renaissance is best known for its dash. Like, what is it known for? Was it known for social developments, cultural developments? socio cultural developments or none of the above okay uh the answer is b it's just cultural developments uh in fact uh the person who was answered it as socio cultural developments it's wrong because we have just seen that society is not progressing at all we have just seen the condition of women being very very repressive right so it's not socio cultural developments dear it's cultural developments only right the chapter itself says change in cultural traditions yeah so it's just culture okay um cool manthan still the fastest uh, good job okay question 9 Andreas Vesalius was a professor of dash at the University of Padua This particular professor by name Andreas Vesalius 
like what is he a professor for for like which department at the university of padua was he a professor of medicine professor of astronomy or philosophy or mathematics andreas vasalius professor of dash okay cool that's simple i'd say it's medicine right so um we have seen that andreas vesalius was actually the first person to dissect a human body we have looked at that point if you remember right so in that sense uh, he was actually the founder of modern physiology so yeah that's medicine department okay let's quickly have a look at the leaderboard Manthan was again the fastest. Good job. Question ten. Choose the odd one out, and you can have your own reason as to why it is the odd one. Uh, moral philosophy, grammar, rhetoric, arithmetic. That's simple, I'd say. uh fair enough it is arithmetic right again we need, we always need to like justify why that is the odd one so in this case arith arithmetic is the odd one because this subject is not a part of the five branches of humanities or five uh, sub fields of humanities right the five sub fields we have are the first one is moral philosophy grammar rhetoric poetry and history right i'm repeating again please make a note of that it's moral philosophy grammar rhetoric poetry and history so these five subjects constituted humanities back in those times yeah so that's why arithmetic is the odd one out um cool Manthan was the fastest again. Good job. Question eleven of twenty-eight. Anatomy, geometry, physics, as well as a strong sense of what was beautiful, gave a new quality to Italian art, called as dash. aesthetic realism liberalism realism or none of the above uh, right most of you all got this right it's realism right so we've stressed on the definition of realism saying it's nothing but whatever looked lively like a human like feature or what looked real be it in terms of paintings be it in terms of sculptures different artworks drawings everything right whatever was real or which had like a 3d form or something all of that was considered as real things or like life like things and that concept or process we call it as realism right okay let's quickly have a look at the leaderboard um Preeti, is your question regarding Menti or Telegram? You're not able to join the Menti quiz, or not able to join the Telegram channel. Uh, clarify your thing, Preeti. Um, okay, so Manthan was again the fastest. Not too far away are uh, Mahima, Aditya, hurry up, guys! Like catch up. You still have like eighteen more questions to go. Okay, question twelve. Gregorian calendar was introduced by Pope. Like he was a Pope. What was his name? Like which Pope basically introduced Gregorian calendar? Was it Evaristus, Gregory eleven, Gregory thirteen, or Peter Saint? <laughs> okay. Uh, The answer is actually Gregory thirteen, right? 
it's clearly there in one of the boxes in your textbook saying that Gregory 13 was actually responsible for introducing Gregorian calendar. Like it's um, the, the calendar is named after the person, right? It's named after the person's name, which is Gregory, right? So um, only one of y'all got this right, but that's okay. Um, there's something y'all learned today. Okay, it was Manthan who got this right. Cool. Okay, question 13. The opening of trade between Europe and China started in which century? Look at the regions properly. I'm asking about Europe and China. Is it 9th century, 10th century, 11th century or 12th century? Trade between Europe and China. Okay, uh, I'd say the answer is uh, option D, which is 12th century, right? That is also a fact mentioned in your tax textbook. So uh, please make a note of the facts again. Okay. Um, Mahima and Aditya got this right. Cool. Aditya was the fastest. Good job, Aditya. Manton still leading. Question 14. Erasmus, who is a Christian humanist, was actually from which country? Was he from Italy, Holland, England? or France? Repeating the question, Erasmus, who was a Christian humanist, was from which country? Italy, Holland, England, France. Time is up and uh, okay, more than half of you all got this right which is Holland, right? So, um, again, if anybody knows like the world dynamics and stuff, like Erasmus is something like a Dutch thing. The name in itself has a Dutch origin. So, in that sense, he belonged to Holland, but that's okay if you don't know all of those uh, connections and stuff. Just remember, Erasmus is from Holland. He's a humanist uh, and he's a Christian, right? Okay, um, I think Manthan is the fastest again. Yes, and also topping. We are halfway through the quiz, guys. We still have uh, half of the questions remaining. Uh, everybody catch up. You are doing great as of now. Let's keep going. Question 15. Protestant Reformation was dash. Like what is Protestant Reformation? Is it a document opposing church practices? A movement against Catholic Church by Martin Luther, a monk? Was it a mutiny? Or was it a peasant's movement opposing over taxation? Fairly simple answer, I would say, Protestant Reformation. Uh, if you remember the term Protestant Reformation, the first thing that has to come to your mind is Martin Luther King, right? Very, very famous advocate of Protestantism. He absolutely did not like what the Catholic Church was saying, how oppressive the Catholic Church is being, right? It's not giving individuality or uh, freedom to the in, uh, man or like to the human being. He did not like any of these. And therefore, one day he decides to stand up against this Catholic Church. And that's when he actually started this Protestant Reformation. Right? So that's Martin Luther King. He's basically a monk. Okay. Um, leaderboard. Cool. Uh, Tom was the fastest. Good job, Tom. 
क्वेश्चन सिक्सटीन कॉपनिकस वॉज अफ्रेड ऑफ प्रिंटिंग हिज मैन्यूस्क्रिप्ट बिकॉज ऑप्शन ए इट वॉज नॉट गुड टू मैन काइंड ऑप्शन बी इट वॉज अ डिस्क्लोजर ऑफ चर्च फैलसी ऑप्शन सी इट वुड जियोपडाइज हिज इमेज इन सोसाइटी ऑप्शन डी ही वॉन्टेड टू अवॉइड इट्स बिटर पर्कशन इन हिज इंडिविजुअल लाइफ टाइम कॉपनिकस वॉज अफ्रेड ऑफ प्रिंटिंग हिज मैन्यूस्क्रिप्ट बिकॉज ओके दी आंसर इज डी राइट सो इव क्लियरली लुक्ड एट द होल एपिसोड ऑफ कॉपनिकल लाइक हु वॉज ही वॉट डिड ही फाइंड आउट एंड स्टफ लाइक दैट जस्ट टू गिव यू अ रीकैप बिकॉज दिस इंफॉर्मेशन इज इम्पॉर्टेंट कॉपनिकल वॉज एक्चुअली अ साइंटिस्ट हु वॉज रेस्पॉन्स हु वॉज वन ऑफ द पर्सन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टू द साइंटिफिक रेवल्यूशन हैपनिंग इन यूरोप सो वॉट डिड ही से ही एक्चुअली वेंट अगेंस्ट द चर्च इज theory saying that it is not the earth but the sun which is the center of the universe and all the other planets including the earth revolve around the sun that is what copernicus invented but he never published it because obviously if he is going against the church he will be punished because in some sense he is um, going against the religion and insulting the religion so obviously he is punished and therefore he is afraid and he didn't want to um experience whatever the bad things are going to happen in his lifetime until he is alive and that is exactly the reason just before he was dying when he was on his deathbed he gave it to one of his disciples one of his students right so after he passes away he doesn't care what people think but at least when he is alive he didn't want to face those bad percussions right so option d is the correct answer it's uh, he, because he didn't want to face it while he was alive okay um aditya and manthan got this right uh, manthan is clearly the fastest good job guys okay question 17 William Tyndall while presenting English version of the Bible says that like says dash uh says that the Bible will create public awareness to religion that network of Christianity would increase it will imprint virtues in the hearts of masses it will disclose how trickily church turned bible to their advantage um cool fair enough the answer is option d right um, again why is that so because bible was actually in only one language in aramaic in the original language which is it which it was written in people didn't know that language so obviously people didn't read the bible by themselves but have always been blindly trusting what the clergymen the uh, priests have been telling in the church every sunday right but once translations happened and especially once it got translated to english because most of the people knew english in europe when they were trying to read the bible it's obviously like a revolution right because they'll find out that nothing what the priests are saying is mentioned in the bible like nothing not even one thing right and all of this what the priests have been telling is that they have turned bible to their advantage to meet their greediness right so that point will be very very clearly uh, evident and that's what william tyndall says in uh, his work right okay um cool two of you all got this right manthan was the fastest good job okay question number 18 the universities of padua and bologna had been centers of dash studies were they centers of medicine studies legal studies literature studies or commerce studies fairly simple uh, it's legal studies 
right? Again, what is the concept, context behind this? We have seen how uh, there's a demand for lawyers in the society, yeah, for various purposes. For whatever reasons it is, lawyers have been in great demand, like sol solicitors, lawyers, advocates, and people like that, which means they have to study law. Without studying law, nobody can become a lawyer, right? So for that, uh, even in the university education, like because of the demand, most of the students started taking up legal studies. Yeah, and for legal studies in particular, these two universities of Padua and Bologna have been, uh, have forever been the important centers, right? Okay. Um, All of you all got this right. Um, Mahima was the fastest. Good job, Mahima. Okay, question 19. Cassandra Fedel was dash. Like, she's a woman. All of us know that she's a woman. She's a female uh, person. But what profession did she have? Was she a professor, psychologist, orator, or none of the above? Cassandra Fedel was dash. Okay, the answer is actually D. It's none of the above because any guesses as to who she was? Uh, people who have answered uh, option D, none of the above. So what was she like? What profession did she uh, practice? Any clues, guys? Um, okay, um, I'll just... Uh, no, Aditya, she is not a women orator. I'm, I'm sorry about that. She's not a women orator, Aditya. But she actually was a women humanist. See, I get it why you think, yeah, yeah, I get it, Aditya, why you think that she was a orator per se. But the problem here is she never pursued orating skills as a profession. Her actual profession was that she's a humanist. So she's a women humanist. But very, like, once in a while, people used to call her to, I don't remember the university's name, but, like, she used to go to some university to just deliver some random speeches. That doesn't make her a professional orator, right? Because she hardly did that like twice or thrice uh, in her lifetime. So she's not an orator professionally, but as a hobby, probably, probably she used to like go and deliver speeches. But actually she's a woman humanist, right? Achha, university was Padua itself. Cool, uh, thanks Aditya for that. Uh, I hope that clarifies your point, Aditya. Okay, let's quickly have a look at the leaderboard. Manthan was the fastest. Good job. Tom also got this right. Okay. Question 20. Petrarch was awarded the title of Poet Laureate in 1341 at which place? Where was he awarded this title of Poet Laureate? Was it in Florence, Rome, Greece or Paris? Fair enough, the answer is B, it's Rome, right? It's one of the, uh, it's in one of the boxes in your textbook. We do have a lot of information about Petrarch in the chapter itself, but regarding this title of Poet Laureate, it's given in one of the boxes, right? So please make sure to read the boxes as well. Okay, um, lead a board. Uh, I don't know who this room is, but yeah. That person was the fastest. Manthan still topping. Good job, guys. Question 21. Peter Burke was criticizing 
which of the following scholars in relation to the use of the term renaissance this is towards the concluding of your chapter right peter burk is criticizing a particular scholar who was he leopold von ranke jacob burkard thomas munro george eggers um it's uh, it's option b which is jacob burkard right so we have seen that jacob burkard was actually very very rigid in terms of categorizing uh, modern and ancient ages and differentiating renaissance and pre renaissance ages that's what jacob burkard does but peter burk kind of criticizes jacob by saying that your process is very rigid but that is that was not the actual scenario which happened in real life so on the grounds of that burk actually criticizes burkard right okay uh, and just for your reference the first option leopold von ranke was the teacher of uh, burkard right okay leaderboard mantan was the fastest good job question 22 which of the two italian cities were republics was it rome and venice florence and venice rome and florence or none of the above okay a fairly simple direct question it's florence and venice right so we were talking about these two cities in regards to people gaining a lot of independence people realizing that they have their own states right they want they wanted their identity to be belonging to a particular city state so in such scenarios these two cities florence and venice actually became republics again republic is where the head of that particular territory is elected directly by the people right so that's republic and others were court cities exactly aditya you have the point there except these two cities other cities in italy were referred to as court cities yeah uh lead board Mantan was the fastest. Good job. Okay, question twenty three. The revival of the ports on the Italian coast happened because of dash. I'm talking about the revival of the ports on the Italian coast uh, because of Mongols opening opening up trade with China. trade between byzantine empire and islamic countries increase in trade via silk route and mediterranean sea or all of the above unfortunately d is not the answer it's actually b right um it's only because of trade between byzantine and islamic countries right there was a revival of italian coast because whenever the ships have to travel from one place to another there was always a always a halt at these italian ports so there was like a necessity for these ports to be developed because of so much important export happening right so it's just option b okay um uh mahima and mantan got this right Mandan was the fastest. Good job. Okay, question twenty-four. Michelangelo painted the ceiling of Dash. Very important question. Michelangelo painted the ceiling of Saint Peter's Basilica, Sistine Chapel. Vatican Museum or all of the above. Okay, uh, it's B. It's Sistine Chapel, right? It's in Vatican City. Very very uh, important. Along with Sistine Chapel, he also painted other um, two important uh, monuments. Let's say, which are famous, right? So Michelangelo is a very great artist. 
Okay. Uh, again, it's Mahima and Mantan who got this, right? Mantan is the fastest. Good. Okay, question 25. The term humanitas was coined by a Roman lawyer and an essayist called as Dash. Like who coined this term humanitas? Was it Marcus Cicero, Julius Caesar, Lucius Seneca or Socrates? Absolutely right. It's option A which is Marcus, Marcus Cicero, right? It's just given as Cicero in your textbook, but his full name is Marcus Cicero, right? So that is exactly the term where we get the present word humanities from, right? So it's humanitas is actually a Latin term. From there, the English word humanities is derived. Okay. Uh, Manthan was the fastest. Good job. Question 26. Giovanni Pico della Mirandola. It's his name. He wrote a book in 1486 on the importance of debate called as Dash. Like what is the book called as? On the liberty of man, on the dignity of man. On the freedom of man or on the equality of man? Uh, cool. So it's just a B. It's called as on the dignity of man. This information is again given in a box in your textbook, not the actual content. So that's why I highly suggest you all to read the boxes also very, very carefully. Yeah. Okay. Cool, it was just Vroom who got this right. Good job, Vroom. Question 27. What is Giotto di Bondone famous for? In your textbook, it's just Giotto, right? What is he famous for? For painting lifelike portraits, contemporary art, miniature paintings or none of the above right um yes right it's painting lifelike portraits portraits are just the human figures right they are of the lifelike as in they look very realistic and life-sized images all of the credit goes to giotto but the other question which can be framed in the same manner is um what is donatello famous for Again, Donatello is another famous um, artist slash sculptor slash painter, right? What is he actually famous for? In that sense, your answer is supposed to be um, lifelike statues, right? So he's actually a sculptor. He makes statues. So don't con don't get confused. Giotto is famous for lifelike portraits. Whereas um, the other person is famous for lifelike statues, uh, Donatello, right? So, yeah. Leaderboard. Manthan was the fastest and also topping. Okay, we have one last question uh, for this Menti quiz. It's question 28. To whom are Europeans indebted for printing technologies? To whom are Europeans indebted for printing technologies? Indians, Eurasians, Chinese, Mongols. The answer is Chinese, right? Absolutely correct. Uh, Honestly speaking, it was in fact the Chinese who invented the printing press or the printing technology in itself, right? So from there on, there's a whole other story as to how this printing technology um, got exchanged from China to Europe, right? So there the Mongols come into picture, right? Mongols were actually responsible for spreading these ideas, technologies, from the court of Chinese rulers to Europe. 
but the inventors are chinese themselves right so yeah that's a little bit of the session we had for today uh 28 questions i thought was decent enough most of them are pretty factual because the chapter in itself is a um um factual chapter right so yeah but other than that let's just quickly have a look at the leaderboard for one last time for today amazing so manthan's the fastest and also um topping it good job manthan that is a uh, great work done you have been consistent throughout amazing i think you almost got like uh, 26 questions right out of 28 that's an amazing job because we didn't have many revisions but still you carried out that thing good job uh, also great job other people as well uh, mahima vroom tom and aditya amazing guys um, well done congratulations everyone it was great cool so that brings us to the end of the quiz that's that was a quick 15 minute session yeah so any questions any doubts you all have regarding this chapter or regarding how the quiz happened um anything we can have like a conversation for 2 3 minutes and then wind up the class yeah so if you all have any comments to make you all can do that now okay um Were were the questions easy or was it difficult for you guys? Should I make the question your more difficult next time or what's the scene, guys? How did you feel uh, the questions were? Easy, moderate, hard? Any comments anybody has? Or like any other general questions regarding the chapter? or how are you going to proceed next anything if there are no questions we can like quickly wrap the session up okay um i don't see any i'm assuming everything's clear for everybody cool um i'll just wind up this class then uh I just to let you guys that there's something called as box bounty it's an unacademy special feature it's an opportunity for all you students out there to report any sort of inappropriate content in the video and you can also claim a prize for that if you are the first one to report that issue and this reporting has to be done by using the form in the description below of this video and um there's like a crash course thingy which is happening for 11th standard humanity student and this is especially for people who haven't finished term 1 exams the term 1 revision right the fast track revision these are the educators here you see on the screen so if you are interested uh, highly recommend you all to go join them and there's an offer going on for plus subscriptions right now it's a limited offer so hurry up go grab yours before the offer ends and yeah finally thank you thank you so much for joining me for the quiz uh, on a tuesday evening um i had fun i'm hoping you all learned something out of, out of this too yeah and if you like the content of these videos please do like it share it as much as possible and also subscribe to the channel an academy and scholars in particular thanks guys thanks so much um i'll see you again on thursday right which is day after tomorrow just to give you a heads up as to what are we doing on thursday it's actually uh, we're starting a new chapter which is chapter 9 titled as the industrial revolution right so we will start off a new chapter um, on thursday yeah that's also a small chapter i'm uh, assuming it's just like a 15 16 page chapter we can finish that also in 3 4 sessions okay so um, that's the structure of the next couple of classes um i'm hoping everybody is excited for industrial revolution because i am uh it's personally my favorite topic we can go ahead with that on thursday um we'll start from the scratch yeah so cool 
that's it we have um, i am closing the session because nobody seems to have any doubts which is good okay uh, i'll see you guys on thursday till then have a good evening today have a good day tomorrow as well because i won't be seeing you tomorrow and yeah bye and uh, take care guys uh, bye ronak bye everyone